Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for making a little time to check the video out. Got a good one for you guys today. We're gonna to be talking about pork frogs a little bit more. We've talked about them some in the videos in the past, but I just sort of wanted to pose the, press, the question, is pork a uh, position to start making a comeback where more people use it than they do the plastic trailers? Um, there's been a resurgence in pork the last few years. I'm gonna talk about that and sort of talk about some applications when I use it over plastic here. Um, before we get started, guys, I just want to remind you, you guys may or may not know that I'm working with Papa E's Pork Frog here. Guy, this is a great company. It's out of Kentucky, uh, owned and operated by a veteran. Um, make just some awesome pork here. I'll include the Facebook link. that You have to order them through the Facebook page they have, Papa E's Pork. And if you use the promo code BLOCKAT15, my name, B-L-A-U-K-A-T-15, you get a discount on the pork. So um, I'd highly encourage you guys to get a few jars with that. Also, I'm working with Popeye's with Baitworks. I'm designing a signature series frog. It's gonna be available at Baitworks here pretty soon, so I'll keep you updated on that. But use that promo code block at 15, and, and I'll, I'll also include the Facebook page link in the description for this video. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about pork here. Uh, just the old school pork, man. This has been around forever, um, really up until the about 2003, 2004. I used it almost extensively, exclusively on my jig trailers. And then there, there was a pork shortage, pork became unavailable, Uncle Josh sort of quit making it and I had to start to use plastic like everybody else did. And here comes Elijah. What are you doing there? Um, huh? I'm all done being muddy. Are you muddy? Yeah. Okay, you gotta take your boots off before you come in. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay, hold yeah, on guys, I gotta tap Elijah to get his boots off. Okay guys, I'm back. I had to get Elijah squared away there. So anyway, let's give you guys a few tips and pointers on pork here as far as when to use it. I'm gonna give you guys little some little pro tips on how to work them up a little bit here too to get more bites on them. First of all, people are gonna ask when to use pork um, over plastic. In my opinion, guys, it doesn't, it, a lot of people say, oh, you need to use pork in the summer, in the winter time because it's got better action versus the summer. I, that's not, I don't agree with that at all. To me, pork is all about water visibility. I'm using pork in off-colored water. If the water visibility, I don't like to use pork if the water visibility is really over about two and a half foot clarity. That's about my max. I prefer it to be sort of like anywhere between six inches to maybe a foot and a half. That's the ideal scenario. I'm not sure what it is. It probably has to do with some of the color, the way the colors are, the way the colors look, because when you're dealing with pork, guys, you have limited color options. Um, you got your greens, browns, some reds, black and blues, but you don't have like the flake and the different type of translucent colors like you do in the soft plastic trailers. So the first deal is consideration is the water clarity. I don't, I don't have any preference as far as on water temperature or the type of cover that I'm fishing. It's more about water clarity. Um, the second thing that you have to do on this, um, once you determine that you want to try pork, is um, you got to get the most out of your pork as far as working it up. Now, guys, when you one of the characteristics about pork is the pork itself is sometimes it's a it's a little stiff. Sometimes it takes a set on there in the jars. Um, that's one of the things we're working on with the uh, Papa's pork through Baitworks. We're developing a container where the legs don't curl up in them. But one of the things that you have to do with pork, and you, you, this is just part of the process, is you need to learn how to work it. So when I get pork, what I do is I'll come through here and I'll just start, you know, working the legs, just trying to just sort of break up maybe some of the fiber in it like that. It just gets a little bit more lifelike and a little bit more pliable. And also sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the back side of a knife and I'll like tenderize it like a meat tenderizer, sort of getting it pounded up a little bit like that. That'll really give it a lot more uh, uh, just a lot more life-like appearance in the water. And of course, another thing, you really have to make sure this thing is wet all the time. That's really gonna uh, help it out. Another thing I do, and this is gonna be one of the things we're coming out with the block at old school, or excuse me, with the my signature series pork, is a lot of pork um, that you got, well, let me show you on this particular piece here, is you can see how thick the, the fat is right on the on the deal there. Um, some guys like this. Per personally, I don't like that extra fat there. It gets in the way of hook. So as you can see here, I've taken a uh, pair of scissors and I've thinned it out a little bit to give me a little bit more of a bite gap on my hook there. So that that's just a personal preference with that. So for me, another thing with that is there's a couple different sizes. 
you have like, what is this right here? This is the jumbo size. You've got regular sizes. I prefer the jumbo size most all the time, guys. Most of the time, I'm using the jumbo size with this is the block at old school jig here. By the way, I'll include the bait works link in the description if you guys need to get you some old school jigs and pork, which is old school bait. Um, but I like the living rubber too, guys. The living rubber in combination with pork is the deal. Now, here's the thing about it is there's only a handful of companies that make living rubber hand tied skirts out there. The block at old school is one of them matched up with the pork. You will get twice the amount of bites with the living rubber jig over a silicone jig with pork. It's just something, it has to do with the glow. The glow of living rubber and the presence and the way that pork looks in the water, It this is one of the reasons it works so good. You can't explain it, but the the look the, and the glow and the way that the bait, you know, the, the, just the way the bait looks in the water with a combination of live rubber and pork is completely different than silicone and soft and a soft plastic trailer on there. There's no difference. I'm not saying that silicone and soft plastic doesn't work because obviously it does. But guys, I'm telling you right now, when you get into off-colored water, um, you're simply going to catch bigger and more fish on pork with a live rubber jig than you will the other. It's just there's just something about it that it really works good. So anyway, guys, give it a try. You, you know, get on. I'll, I'll put the Facebook page in the link here. Get you some Papa Yees. With the discount on the promo code there get you some block of old school jigs not to sound like a promo <laughs> like a commercial here but it's just i just want you to try the living river and pork because i know a lot of you guys have never used it. a lot of the younger guys out there you you've never been exposed to living rubber jigs and pork frogs it's all been silicone jigs silicone swim jigs silicone flipping jigs and soft plastic so once you try this right here i think that you're really going to find a place for it in your arsenal. And it's like anything else. I'm not, I'm not saying that there's no lure that's like a magical cure. Everything is situational and everything has its time and place. And that's the same with live rubber and pork. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope it, hope it helps you guys catch some and we'll talk later.